Hello and welcome to my series on how to run full car uh, CFD. This video is going to be showing you how to import it. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure you got power on demand, power session, and your power on demand key. Um, and sorry, I'm going to do a voiceover, so I'm just walking, seeing what I do over here in this video. So sorry if I'm a little off. Um, so once it powers up, you can click this little triangle with the arrow coming out of it to import your geometry. Make sure it's a parasol x.t. Uh, you want to make sure it's coarse and then click OK. You can see it here um, in the software and star. Uh, next you want to go to geometry parts assembly, do repair surface. And what this is doing is just to make sure you have nothing intersecting or uh, anything like that. And you want to unselect two and three over here. Uh, I went a little fast there, but now you see I have zero errors. Um, once you do that, you can come on and we're going to uh, do split by surface photography, sorry, on the radiator. And we can delete this side of the radiator because we're only going to do half the car. Um, it's pretty symmetrical. Um, and now we're going to do the same thing. Oh, actually, we're going to drag the radiator out of the assembly into parts. And then we're going to do the same thing with tires. And we're going to delete the passenger side set of tires because we don't need them. And now that we have each tire individually, so that will allow us to do rotating tires inside the coordinate system for that. Now we did split by patch on our radiator that's outside the assembly. And you're just going to do your inlet, your outlet, and your walls of the radiator. Um, this will help uh, later on, I guess, in about the third video you'll probably see. Just renaming it the walls. Now you can just drag in your radiator and your tires into the assembly, and, or into the into your geometry so you can just visibly see it. And there she is. Now you're going to create a block and the uh, purpose of this is pretty much going to be our wind tunnel. Um, so we're just going to do zero in this Y coordinate that way we were right in the middle of the car. So half of the car, assuming it's perfectly symmetrical. Um, good enough for our, what we're doing here and now there's a more legit reason on what size you should do uh, I tend on playing it safe and just making it a little bit bigger than it's supposed to be uh, since we have a supercomputer and we can compute a bigger size file if need be it's not that big of an issue so uh, I will post on GradCab or something appropriate dimensions if you feel unsure on belt picking but you want to make sure that you have enough room for your wake and your inlet and outlets to properly flow and not propagate through the air and mess up anything so once you do that you create your box and then you add it to geometry one just like you did your tires and your radiator and you can see the car split perfectly down the middle <clears throat> Now you're gonna split the box, or you're gonna split the box into, uh, or split the surfaces of the box into uh, patches, just like you did your radiator almost. And this will determine your velocity inlets and your pressure outlet, as long as like symmetry planes or your walls. So pressure or velocity inlet, pressure outlet, and since we're doing a rolling floor, or since we have a floor uh, and we have ground effects, you're gonna do uh, separate your ground and then the sides and the top uh, you can just assume our symmetry planes so now that we did all that and we set up our geometry we're going to create a unite in our operations and we're going to pretty much select everything that we import from CAD uh, practically just your whole assembly except for your radiator and now that we have that we're going to do a unite so operations unite and we're going to do our block our uh, our block, our radiator, and our unite, and then the second part, you only select your block, and so this is going to tell you what you're subtracting out, so pretty much what is running, is being ran in the actual simulation. Then you just go to operations, execute all, and you can see here there's your unite and there's your subtract, but the other half of the car isn't subtracted out of the box, obviously. And here you can see the tires, uh, can get a little funky if they aren't sticking all the way enough through and they're barely sticking up 
like it's barely sticking through there. So I'm gonna add. Uh, just gonna move them down half an inch. Um, I've had troubles with it in the past, so this eliminates that trouble and doesn't worry about it. Just you can see your z-axis there, so we're gonna go negative in the z. And I forgot the conversion here for half an inch to millimeters or half an inch to meters. And there you can see the tire shifted down. And obviously you can see whenever you do something and you're not subtract, uh, you're going to have to re-execute it. So, that's what I'm going to do here. Alright, now we're good. The tires moved down. And now I'm going to assign parts to regions from your subtract in your parts. Uh, you always want to do this and just do create a region for each part and create a boundary for each part surface. And make sure you subtract. Your, make sure you add your radiator and your subtract. Uh, you have to do this before you mesh, or you're going to have uh, some troubles. Here you can see the tire sticking through, and radiator, everything looks good. Now you can come down here to regions. You don't have to do this right now, but uh, just to show you, come down your subtract, and you're going to have all your block surfaces, and you can just label them here to what they really are: your velocity inlet, your pressure outlet, and your symmetry planes and the ground you leave as a wall. So that was a little off task, sorry about that. But now we're going to get a mesh, uh, of automated mesh. Select your subtract, your radiator, and then your uh, surface mesher, surface repair, trim cell mesher, and prism layers. Um, now you always do per part meshing, and then you'll be able to see your default mesh uh, controls. So. That'll be it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.